The Lord be with you. Good morning. It's good to see you here on a bright uh, sunny morning and pray that this day will be good to us all, especially as we gather to hear the word of God. And especially our theme for the day is putting on the armor of God taken from our epistle lesson this morning. We'd like to welcome our guests, members alike, uh, today that the Lord would uh, work mightily among us, that we might indeed be his people wearing the armor that he provides. In your bulletin today for announcements, you have, first of all, an insert uh, like this where you can print the names of people that you would like to pray for and also to invite to St. John's. I urge you to use this sheet and uh, to make a list and pray for members and non-members alike. Also, you have in your bulletin uh, from our Board of Youth, the golf outing. And if you look on one side of the page, you can see that they are in need of prizes. And uh, if you can help, that would be great. On the other side is the uh, registration form. If you don't have a foursome, but you'd like to play, just sign up just your name and you will be put with three others uh, for uh, golfing that day. Uh, today is the deadline for the next session of Life Light, which is selected psalms. And uh, the uh, orientation meeting will be next Sunday. Um, also, they're ready to start the fall session of home fires. Now you can put your name on the roster on the main hall bulletin board if you are interested. And you notice today that the, the blood mobile was outside. Uh, they're taking blood from 8 o'clock till noon. And there's a definite need for blood because there's a shortage. So if you can uh, consider giving the gift of life, please do so. Our service begins with Fight the Good Fight, hymn number 664.
please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. And having done all, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought and word and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May be seated for our hymn of praise. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the source of all that is just and good, Nourish us in this very virtue, every virtue, and bring to completion every good intent. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for today is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4. And now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the rules that I am teaching you, and do them that you may live, and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, has given you. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they hear these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? And what great nation is there that has statutes and rules so righteous as all this law that I set before you today? Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and to your children's children. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm, Psalm 119. Your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Keep steady my steps according to your promise and let no iniquity get dominion over me. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. Turn to me and be gracious to me as is your way with those who love your name. Our epistle that serves as our text for today's message, Ephesians chapter six. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the hearing of the gospel from the gospel of St. Mark, the seventh chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. And he called the people to him again and said to them, hear me all of you and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person 
are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from the outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart, but his stomach, and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. And all these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us uh, make a profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we join in singing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. We'll stand on the fourth stanza of a mighty fortress. Hymn number 657.
please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is taken from Ephesians chapter 6. We bow our heads in a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to this hour of a beautiful day gathered together here in your church with our brothers and sisters. We pray your spirit to work mightily among us, first of all, through the gospel of your love for us and your son, that we might continue to grow as your children, always mindful of the armor that you provide for us to be able to stand in our world today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Fellow redeemed, in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Our epistle for this morning is talking about a battle. And not only does he talk about battle, he talks about taking up weapons and resisting the enemy and that is coming against us continually and that we are able to stand. What do St. Paul's images of battle have to do with this religion of the Prince of Peace? We live in a society that is addicted to violence. It is necessary for the church to, is it necessary for the church to talk about weapons, battles, being strong in the Lord? Before we tackle these questions, it's worth noting that the armor that is described by the Apostle Paul is for defensive purposes. The soldiers are supplied with the appropriate armor that will enable them to hold their ground and not run away. The armor is to protect these soldiers from the lunging of the enemy and with the attacking blows that would come from the enemy. To get a perspective of what it means to deal with uh, the enemy, let's think about an illustration. This morning you got up for church. And if you have children, it probably took three times, or you parents can remember a time when you had children, and you had to remind them not only once, but several times, to get up and get ready to go to church. And when you did so, you finally had breakfast and then you got in the car to come. No doubt you got in the car and you opened the garage and you noticed, ah, what a wonderful day, blue sky, a few clouds in the air, Weather's not too bad. Why am I going to church? Not only is that preying on your mind, but as you leave, you notice that some of your neighbors are already up. And they're getting ready to enjoy the day. Maybe your neighbor has a boat and they're getting ready to go, you know, well, let's see, go to Sullivan and go to that lake. What's the name of that lake? Shelbyville? Well, that's the town. What's the name of the lake? Shelbyville? Okay. Well, they're taking their boat out to the lake. And you know, it's, well, that's nice. And there I am going to church. You see another neighbor and they're getting ready to cut the grass because it's kind of nice and it's in the cool of the morning and you think I'm going to church. Well, and then as you leave and as you're going to church, you, you begin to wonder what's going on. For those of you that live uh, a little bit out of the city, probably notice some of the farmers in their field. 
And then the thought comes to your mind, why am I going to church? Why? Why aren't I spending time relaxing and doing things that I want to do, that I will be able to enjoy on a beautiful day? As you drive to church, you finally feel that you're kind of like the odd one out. You begin to feel out of step with the rest of the world. When you tell your friends that you go to church every week, you might not even notice that they raise their eyebrows. Well, you go to church every week? Really? You're the first person I know that really goes to church every Sunday. I would have never taken you to be that kind of a religious person. Or maybe they have a faint smile on their face and they're uttering words that you cannot hear. Oh, poor thing. I wouldn't have believed that you would fall for that religious stuff. You are getting the distinct impression that the world is marching to a different drummer. And as you meet and talk with people, you realize that your values are based on something different than other people in our society today. You struggle with this whole idea because of your Christian faith. And there are some things that you just simply cannot agree with even though everyone else in society says that it is right when you know that according to God's word, it is wrong. You find yourself wondering how people who have no faith can face things like permanent disability, hard times, or dealing with death. You trust in God's love and goodness, and your faith has been an important factor in your life. So how do people who don't have this hope or the love of God, how can they cope? You find yourself disagreeing with people who run other people down, gossip, taking a position that is so opposed to what you believe, or criticize those who are trying to do good. It may happen that there is so much that you disagree with that person that you don't know what to say, and so you keep your mouth shut. You are so overwhelmed, and you just don't know where to start. There was a time going to church and Sunday school where the appropriate thing to do, first and foremost, was church and Sunday school. My parents uh, wondered little whether my brother or I would grow up as Christians. There was no New Age movement, no spirituality, no multiculturalism, no Eastern religions, none of that. And we were expected to be in worship and Sunday school every week. Stores were closed on Sunday. There was no thought of doing on Sunday what you could do on Saturday. What could have been more ideal? In a world, the church didn't have to bother too much with defensive maneuvers. Why should it? It seemed as though everything was at peace. But how things have changed in our day Back then, one wouldn't have had the faintest idea that a member of the church was going to be as difficult as it is today. And that's where our problem begins. The church and its members put down the armor and became vulnerable to attacks from the outside, from society. We aren't facing persecution as they do overseas. No one is shedding blood for their faith here in America. The priority given material things to pleasure seeking, to gratifying one's own needs and wants, 
the complacency toward the word of God, the mocking of Christian values by the mainstream media, the power of the media and commercialism, these are the principalities and powers that the world uses to tempt us, to mock us, and sometimes even to subdue us. We're not fighting the same battle as the Ephesians fought. We don't have a Caesar on our backs punishing us because we are Christians. No bloody persecutions, and yet you and I are still in the same struggle. See, the world, it hasn't changed. Sure, modern technology, you know, has improved. But the war is still the same. The battles may be a little different, but society, the world, wants to rob us of believing in Jesus Christ. Today, Christians are ignored, ridiculed, dismissed by our culture, a culture which is not, uh, on the whole, willfully unbelieving, but for a large part, people simply don't know what the church is about. A lot of Christian bodies have forsaken the message of the gospel that Jesus came because of God's love for the world, that Jesus died on a cross, taking our sins, making them his own, so that we would have forgiveness and life and eternal life. The writer to the Hebrews, I mean the writer to the Ephesians, did not have to be convinced that he lived in a hostile world. Remember, Paul was in prison. He was in chains. He knew what it was to suffer because of the world. Today we have a different picture. Our world recognizes how different and strange the Christian faith is, and it tries to undermine it by simply ignoring it. We readily admit that every day we fight this battle by putting on the armor that God has provided. And he provided that for us in the waters of baptism. Now, for some of us, maybe we need to dust off that armor so that we can stand firm against the world, against evil, against all the forces that are arrayed against us that are trying to snatch us away from following Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We're not fighting against humans. We're fighting against forces and authorities, against the rulers of darkness. This is a battle for our souls. And God gives us the armor so that we can defend ourselves and to stand firm. In such a world, what we do here on Sunday morning becomes a matter of life and death. Have you ever thought about that? Here it is that you come into God's house. You sit for a while and you pray, and then the service begins. In the service, you have confession of sins and absolution, forgiveness. And that empowers you to go through another week with all the hassles that the world can throw up against us. It is here in God's house that you can encourage each other in your Christian walk and in the battles that lie ahead. It is here that you are renewed and strengthened. It is here that you pray for one another, and that you are equipped for battle 
by putting on the armor of truth, the gospel of peace, faith, the Holy Spirit that God gives to protect us. Sunday is the one time of the week that we gather to be renewed. We are revived. You and I are made ready for the next week for battle. You know, one soldier, those of you that know a little bit about military, know that if there's only one soldier, well, even with modern technology and with all of the modern weaponry and everything, they may be able to stand for a little while, but if he's with a troop of soldiers, because of the number of soldiers, they are able to stand and they're able to win. No different than us. We don't battle the devil on our own. We battle it together. And we battle it until the Lord says, time's up, you're coming home. We know that daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, we battle. But we know the war is won because Jesus died on the cross. And then he descended into hell, he told the devil, it's done, you're finished. The victory's won. But nevertheless, you and I still battle against the devil and the world, society today. We hear in Romans chapter eight, a wonderful chapter, in the New Testament. We have complete victory through him who loved us. Even though we have Christ's victory here, there is no room for complacency and there's no room for not putting on that armor that God has given us. The devil still walks around as a roaring lion, as Peter says in his epistle. But God has given us the armor needed to defend ourselves against Satan's attack. Remember that armor, truth, righteousness, the gospel of peace, faith, salvation, and the word of God, and the Holy Spirit who is given to us because of the victory through Christ. Dear friend, put on that armor of God daily. Remember that you're not a wimp in our world against the devil, against those who would try to rob you of believing in Jesus. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through faith unto Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please.
we go to the prayer of the church on page 7 of our bulletin. We come before our Lord in prayer, saying along with the psalmist, Turn to me and be gracious to me, as is your way with those who love your name. O Lord, you spoke through your servant Moses, instructing us to teach your word to future generations. Grant us diligence in sharing Christ with our children and our children's children, that they may know him as their Savior. Turn to me and be gracious to me. O Lord, the Apostle Paul warns us of Satan and his schemes. We thank you that you do not leave us defenseless, but give us your armor to guard and defend us. Turn to me and be gracious to me. O Lord, you have the power to heal and to restore, and we humbly ask that you look with favor upon the sick and the hurting in body, mind, or spirit, especially Jack Cly, Sean Borland, Laura Finley, John Romero, Don Prosser, John Holland, Annabelle Bales, and Jeanette Bledsoe. Give to them strength and restoration according to your perfect will. Turn to me and be gracious to me. O oh Lord, we thank you for those who serve on behalf of others, including teachers, first responders, uh, those in the armed forces of our land. Watch over and bless these individuals as they fulfill these vocations with selflessness and honor. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Do we have any children here this morning? Come on down. Come on up. How are we doing? Okay. How are you doing? Good. Well, I'm happy. You gonna go to Sunday school today? Right oh. Well today I'm going to need a volunteer. Who would like to volunteer? Come on up here. I would like you to hold this. Show the congregation what that is. Hold it with two hands. What is that? Now turn and let, what is that? Know what that is? A shirt. Well, it's kind of like that. It's, it's, it's made to look that way. Do you each have one of those? Might want to ask your parents. That's something we give when people are baptized here at St. John's. When you were baptized here at the fount for, baptize, for being baptized, you were given that little garment as it represents your baptism. And I'm going to use that and say that when you were baptized, you were given the armor of God. Oh. You are given a, you know, a helmet, a sword, a breastplate, a shoes. Uh, what am I missing? Uh, sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. 
Got a sword? I need another volunteer. Still stand up. And you're not done yet. Okay, come on. Now, in the Bible reading for today, you got to stand up with that thing and you got to hold it real tight. Hold it close to yourself. Okay? When you were baptized, you were given righteousness. Go put that on that garment. Yeah, stick it on there. There you go. Well, yeah. Oh, you might want to pat it down a bit. It's a little loose. You were also given the gospel of peace. You also were given the word of God. You were given salvation. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of these going on there. You were given faith. Uh, there's two there? Uh, what else is there? Yeah, you could put faith on there. There you go. And you were given truth. And the last thing you were given is the Holy Spirit. All of that was given to you when you were real small. Whoops, it's starting to fall apart. Oh no. Okay. You're doing better than they did last night. Very good. Okay. Now, you can sit down, and you can sit down, but hold it up like this. Now, whoops. <laughs> well, I shouldn't have had you sit. Well, anyways, when you were baptized, you were given the armor of God. And why were you given that armor? Why were you given all those things? So that you would stay and remain, <laughs> remain a child of God. You don't have to put them back on. We know what, uh, what you received in baptism. Let's uh, fold our hands and have a short prayer. Pray with me. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful armor that you give to me that I received in baptism. Help me to stay your child all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. No, I don't think you're, I think you're sleeping yet. Amen? Okay, go join your parents. You bring that back to me? Thank you. <laughs> oh, boy. I think I got to get better stick -em notes. Congregation is asked to rise. We go to the benediction on page 8. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. And having done all, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.
Have a wonderful Labor Day. Hope you're cooking out so I can smell all that good aroma.